Yes, we are very much approved of your new policy towards the Americans. Oh, good. We love the way you, how you say, kick them in the bullocks. <laughs> well, we felt the peace uh... all over them. <laughs> yes, Mr. Dubienkin. Sit down. I... Uh, so, first time you have visited Russia, is it not? Yes, actually. Mm, well, this is a steak. <laughs> Prime cut, top side. Feel it. <laughs> and I can promise you it's not the only one we have. <laughs> In Russia, we have... <laughs> Dozens of steaks. <laughs> Dozens. <laughs> yeah, but this is our country's most popular dish of all. Ah, salt. Da. <laughs> Finest quality. <laughs> Try. <laughs> most people in Russia refuse to eat anything else. <laughs> mm. By lucky coincidence, we have more than 800 billion tons of it. <laughs> so Russia's a fortunate country, is she not? If we might turn to policy discussion. Forgive me. Yeah, what the United Kingdom is really aiming at is a kind of neutral posture. When the world war comes, all neutral countries will have same options as that piece of steak. Rare, medium, or well done. <laughs> Neutral countries are no friends of Russia. Neutral countries keep secrets from us. Secrets? Secrets, like the American plan to restore new Shah of Iran to power. Uh, I don't think I'm quite with you. Mm. Even now, we have two of America's top agents under interrogation. They will tell us where New Shah of Iran is hiding. Everyone knows the New Shah of Iran is dead, sir. If this imperialistic aventurism in the Middle East leads to a war, neutral countries... <laughs> yes, but that won't happen, will it, sir? Because the Shah is dead, isn't he? There are certain things we should keep to ourselves. The fact that the Shah of Iran is still alive, for instance. I wonder if you have ever considered joining the Warsaw Pact. 